What is it like being a small business owner? What are the challenges and pain points of being a small business owner? Today, we have an exclusive interview with an SME owner where we'll be sitting down and talking about the challenges, the struggles, the opportunities, and even how we can leverage digital marketing to scale our businesses. Hey everybody, my name is Mpomo Tarat. This is Deep Dive. If you're here for the very first time, our content is on business, personal development, and personal finance. So if that is what you're into, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss on any of our future videos. And make sure you like this video. It helps us know if you're actually enjoying our content. And comment below on your biggest takeaways. We actually go through your comments and read them to know if we're actually giving you guys the value you deserve. And share this video with one friend, with your family members, with your co-workers, so that it helps us reach a newer audience. We also have live studio audience that come here every Tuesday to watch the live recording of the deep dive. So if you want to register, make sure to drop below. The link will be there for you to register and attend the live recording. We also have a Patreon page where we upload exclusive content over there and the entire episode will be uploaded on a Patreon. So make sure to check out our Patreon. It will be down below in the link description. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive deep. So talk to me about how you attract the best talent to your company because I think every employer wants the best. Yeah, no facts. Um, listen, uh, I think Mozana, just like with business, cash is king. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, um, everybody wants to go for where they can get the biggest paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, but also in recent times, there's been a shift in the mindset of a lot of um employees in the sense that they want and as much as they do want that paycheck they want somewhere where they're happy yeah you yeah understand? yeah um equally just like you you don't want to start a business where it's just about the paycheck and then you are unhappy yeah. about doing that business yeah and, and some that, can sacrifice a yeah. paycheck do you get what for, i mean for a great environment and yeah. great people so yeah. with me i've always tried to you know package vibe pretty well but not just so that it's just uh, face value. Mm. You know, I've really tried to make my employees as comfortable as possible by having open um, communication uh, floor mm. to them. You know, listen, tell me anything. Mm. If you don't like something that I've done, please tell me. Yeah. I am, I'm here to learn also. I'm here to grow from you. Yes. You understand? In as much as I am the boss, yeah. I can learn something from you. You Definitely. know what I mean? I can learn something from everybody. Yeah. So do tell me where I'm wrong. Do praise me where you feel like I need praise. I will equally do the same with you. You understand? And I've always held real nigga conversations with my, with my employees. Mm. You know, like let's say if clients have paid late, which is what's forcing me to pay salaries late, so on and so forth. Mm. You know, I've always uh, held those conversations for them. I've always tried to lead by example. And I've always, for the longest time, put everybody else in front of me mm. first. You understand? Like, for the longest time... <laughs> when you say for the longest time, it sounds like you wanted to be like, yo, now it's my time now. <laughs> no, no, well, I mean, you know what? Um, let's, let's, let me put it like this. Like, yeah. um, before my employees would get paid first, mm. right? Now I get paid at the same time with my employees. I make sure of that. You understand? Sometimes I'll be the last person to get paid. But now I get paid yeah. at the same time with my employees. How do you do that? Make sure that the business makes enough money to pay everybody. Ah. You understand? Simple. <laughs> Simple, eh? Hey, yeah. it's, that's very yeah. important. Make sure yeah. that the business makes enough money to, to pay everybody at the same time. Yeah. But there will be some times, there will be some months where you, you as the boss can't get paid at the same time. So you pay them first. For you sure. understand? Although a lot of entrepreneurs would be like, hey, like Arabo. Emisa, that you need to pay yourself first before. And there's so many, there's a lot of argument and debate about, you know, founders getting paid first. Yeah, jala, yeah, jala. yeah. You know, so I'm still also trying to figure it out. But Mehala, I've always tried to put my employees first. Mm. Always tried to praise them. Always tried to, you know, uplift them. I've always tried to do every single thing that I can in my will, as mm. me as an individual and also as the company, mm. to sort of say, listen, I value your, um, 
but your contribution to the growth of this company. Mm. It's not your company, but you have taken this company with both of your arms and you've really put your all into it. You understand? So I try to make employees feel as appreciated as possible through verbal means, through Mm. monetary means, whatever the case. Because there's, listen, man, unfortunately, Botswana is suffering from um, a toxic environment pandemic. Mm. There's so many Mm. organizations Mm. where the environment is so toxic and it's because of managers who don't want to listen. They have Mm. chips on their shoulders. They feel like this person shouldn't be getting the money that they're getting. They feel Mm. threatened by that person. They feel this and that. There's so many different complexities that are put in. I've always maintained what I don't want to have a toxic environment. More vibe. Mm. Because toxic environments affects what? Productivity. That means that if the productivity is affected, we're not going to grow as quickly as we should be growing. Mm. What is the number one problem you think we're facing as SMMEs in Botswana? Like the number one pain point we should, we're having right now. We're afraid. We're I was afraid. actually thinking, of, I knew, I think I knew uh, you yeah. asked this question. Yeah. Um, when I was driving here, I think I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? Um, a lot of SMME people, mm. owners rather, are, are, are fearful. What are, we, what are we afraid of? Many things. We're mm. fearful of starting, first of all. A lot of Botswana are held back um, by the fear of starting. Fear yeah. of failing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then when you start, you're, you're afraid of other things like raising your invoices because you're afraid of charging what you should be charging for yeah. your services or your product, you know, just in case. And then, you know, you'll charge very low and then you feel like you need to charge mm-hmm. what you're... You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. there's just a bunch of fear that... Um, surrounds Botswana, but it's not even just Botswana, it's just, you know, generally people who want to just jump into business. Otherwise, every, every one of us would be in business. For sure. But um, that is really a huge pain point because of also the this thing called marketing um, and agar. We're afraid of losing clients to the next person. That's why so, we charge low. Yeah, that's why we charge low. And because of charging low, kind of charging low stops progress. You know, you, yeah. s- you progress so slowly. Yeah. And it's painful, man. Like when you're writing that, that thing and you know you charged half, you could, what you could be charging. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think as you, as you, you know, get more experienced in doing business and stuff like that, you start gaining more confidence, right? Yeah. In your brand and what you've built. Then you start raising your prices. And then sooner or later, hopefully sooner, the market starts to pay you what exactly you feel like you deserve. For sure. Yeah, I understand. For sure, for so, sure. yeah, don't always be afraid. We have to work afraid. that part. We have to yeah. work that. But then yeah. how do you overcome that fear, man? Because everybody wants to charge what they're worth, but then deep down you're like, hey, man, this guy might go. Because this X, Y, Z doing exactly what I'm doing, yeah. like they could go. I need this money. This yeah. is not like, this is an SME. Like yeah. they need this money to come in. Yeah. Like what, how do you overcome that, that, that fear? It's really, I think it's all about small steps. It's Mm. all about how you build your brand. It's all about the relationship you create with the market as well. Mm. Um, You know, when you you said something earlier, or this this next guy does the exact same thing that I do. Make sure you build a brand, build a company, build a business that is not easily copied by Mm. the next person. Yeah. When you have that unique identifying factor in your business, that's when you can start charging a premium for your thing. Right. So you need to make sure, Hore, when you start your business, understand, Hore, yeah, maybe at the beginning you might be doing what the next person is doing and there's not much really of a difference between maybe your quality and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But always know, Hore, you're trying to strive for better quality or you're trying to strive for that one unique thing that someone else can't copy because mm. that is your unique selling point. For sure. When for sure. you have that, that's when you can start, you know, charging prices, just like how your big brands do it. Mm. Apple, Amazon, so on and so forth, Huawei really? and all of them, even your Mercedes Benz and your BMWs and all of them. They knew how to listen. This is what we want to be known for. And we are going to be known for that. This is why we charge what we charge. I feel you. All right, guys. So at this point in time, we're going to be reading your comments because we want to know your feedback. We want to know what you like, what you don't like. And we want to give you more of what you like. Okay, so for the first comment, we have seven degrees. He says, this is fresh with a dope. I think this means dope. A dope emoji. I hope to see more of these. Shout out to you, dog. Thank you for watching our content. Tabo Davis commented Mr. SB and 100 emoji. 
meaning this is 100% good. This is 100% amazing. Thank you so much, dog, for watching our videos. Loratang Montebazi said, wow, self-discovery. Yes, it is self-discovery. And thank you for commenting. Your comments mean so much to us. It helps. They help us create better content for you guys. And they help us draw us in the direction that you guys would like us to go. We have Ohone Basia Basia Mang. I hope I pronounced that right. She said, great interview. Thank you so much, Ohone, and for being a new subscriber. Okay, we have a comment here from Tepomwana Kwena. He gave us an elaborate comment. Actually, this is probably the longest comment we've had on the channel. Basically, you were talking about how we should tailor make the questions to the BW industry, the BW climate, the BW environment. And I really agree with you, man. Um, our, con our questions should be more tailor made to what we're experiencing and living through every day. So thank you for your comment, man. Thank you for your feedback very very valuable to us and definitely like you said in the comment come through for the live show i think you will really enjoy that one talk to me about now becoming an employer man because i think this topic is yeah it's 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 it's, it's, it's something that you just find yourself in and hey it's like a sprint you don't even know you started running you know and you're already sprinting now yeah yeah how are you navigating that space and what have you learned so far to set in place as an employer being in, you know what, uh, I actually think HR is the most underrated and most difficult thing about entrepreneurship and we do not talk about it often enough. Because it's people. Because it's people. It's people. It's people, say. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's something and I'm still trying to navigate around now. Um, only just about two years ago, I engaged an HR consultant who helps me a bit with HR and understanding the local human capital market. Um, and the reason why I engaged them, that was after five years being in business because I realized, well, you know what? I need to start making better decisions mm. as a, an employer. I need to start hiring better. I need to start being able to see uh, things that are there that may not be there at the surface level because human capital is what will make or what will take your business from here to there. You understand? And so if you don't hire right, it can be a very devastating factor yeah. in your business. Yeah. You know, um, because someone can come in and just destroy your, your culture and just mess up what I would call it feng shui, which is mm. basically team chemistry. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. it's, it's a very difficult field that yeah. I'm still learning very much. I'm still, I would consider myself in an amateur and I'm still going to consider myself an amateur yeah. for such a long time. Yeah. But I think with me, how I help um, myself in, in my journey as an employer is always trying to put myself in their shoes. Mm. How would I like to be treated as an employee for Karabo? You understand? Would I want to be yelled at by Karabo? Mm. Fine. Maybe yelling is a part of, you know, if I've done something wrong, then I need to be um, reprimanded for that. Yeah. We had that done with our parents and so on and so forth. But you're doing it for constructive purposes. You mm. know what I mean? Um, do hey. I want to be paid on time? So on and so forth. Mm. So then if I'm your employee and I want to raise, how do I approach you? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> listen, you have to... Uh, come at me and say, listen, uh, because of X, Y, Z, I feel like I should be raised. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I've always held the notion, and I've always told my um, employees this, get it again. If the company can pay you 50000 a month, it will pay you just that. Simply because I know that the company will be in a position to pay you that because of who? You. You understand? So we need to work hard to escalating things you mm. understand if the company is not able to pay you what you are asking for so on and so forth i will tell you up front because of i hear you because of abc i can't do just that mm. but trust me i want to i'm not trying to you know what i mean i, I want you to be happy have you been in a position where you have you have you have, you have bought into that You're like yeah you deserve it you're gonna get it definitely Mm, that's going to happen. It's just, I mean, I'm in one right now in terms of a prospective employee wanting to come on board. You understand? Uh, yeah. That's what just, about the, the inverse? The? The opposite. Where? Where it's a raise, I get. What's, mm -hmm. what's the opposite of raise? 
go down. Demotion. <laughs> Demotion. Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, even in a monetary sense. That I've never had, yeah? Mm-hmm. I've never had a demotion. Mm. I've never had a demotion. I don't want to get to that. Yeah, but in as much as I say I don't want to, that is a very real thing that can happen. Mm. And I will cross that bridge when I have to cross it. But I'm, but fortunately, I've ha- I haven't had to, mm. uh, to do that. Even firing, bro. Firing, me f- yeah, firing yeah, yeah. for me is very difficult. Yeah. I've been put in very difficult situations by my employees yeah. in the past. And I've had to go through many um, conversations with them, hearings and stuff. I even had to write a warning letter earlier this year, bro. (laughs) Do you get what I mean? Like handwritten or you type? No, well, obviously it's type. You know, you have to type a warning letter. I didn't want to be in that position because it's like, okay, but you're not doing your job. Yeah. That's why you're putting me in the position. I'm writing you a warning letter. Don't do that. Do your work. You know, do your work. Do your work so you can get paid for it so that we can grow so that, you know what I mean? Don't mm. put me in a position where I have to write you a warning letter. Please. Mm. And you know, that's why I also really, ooh, man, you see HR. Yeah. I don't want to be doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? I want to yeah. be more on a strategic level like how a CEO is supposed to be. So yeah. there will come a point where I need to hire like a full-time in-house HR person who yeah. does the who does that warning work. letter stuff yeah. or who does the firing. You understand? Because, yeah. yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you're going to turn one year by the door. You're going to be like, Ish. you get what I mean? Oh, but send, it, I, send an email. <laughs> I need to grow because yeah. th- that is a reality that has to happen. Mm. You understand? That's a reality that you have to have, you have to be willing to have uncomfortable conversations with people. Mm. That means either firing, that means either suspension, so on and so forth. Mm. So, hey, sh- hey man, entrepreneurship is no joke. Mm. Yeah. All right, man, um, talk to me now. Let's really go into vibe. Mm. Um, how are you guys doing your business over there? How do you even get clients and help people, you know, help them stand out digitally? How do you yeah. help people stand out digitally? How do you yeah. help brands, businesses stand out digitally? Yeah. Well, at Vibe, we employ some of the most brightest, the youngest and freshest minds, right? So, That's what I try to take pride in. Um, so because of that, we try to come up with the freshest strategies, uh, marketing strategies. We try to be very knowledgeable on our, the playing field that we, you know, the digital yeah, you know, uh, playing field. Um, my design team also does a fantastic job. One of our clients is actually in 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 the audience here. Nice. You know, imagine they came all the way out here nice. because they're very happy. If they weren't happy with what we did for them, never right, be here. I, they wouldn't be here. You understand? Plus, I'd like to believe that I'm also good looking. Um, <laughs> We got yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you, you get what I mean. Yeah, so um, we try to package our clients in a very unique manner, just like how we package ourselves to attract the right target market to them and who they feel like they want to be attracting yeah. um, to the to their business. So that's really, and I, I like to be hard on my team. But at the same time, I'm also a very chilled, like you can tell, I'm a very yeah. chilled dude. Yeah. Um, so... The, it's all about balance, you know? Yeah, yeah, I can be chilled, but when business, you know, when it comes yeah. push to shove, we need to get, get to in it. that work. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah, that's what I take pride in. In, in, in vibe, you know, um, there will be a point where I step aside mm. um, and I pass the baton on to someone else who I think can take uh, mm. the, the company to the next level. Yes, sir. Um, and that's what, and the reason why I'm also even bringing that up is because we need to, as entrepreneurs, Mubutsana, understand what we will sometimes become irrelevant in our businesses. Mm. You'll be sitting at home or whatever, or on the beach, oh, I'm okay, like dividend checks ahead. Mm. That's what you should be aiming for. If I could retire right now, my nigga, I would. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. As long as I know what the business is in the right hands, it's being scaled up, it's being grown, and them checks is coming in. Yeah. Boy, we can go to the beach. I'm we in can Cape do this. Town. We can do this. I, I'm on the French flight. We can, do this. We can you, do this. You kidding yeah. me right now? Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. So that's what we need to understand. We need to mm. build legacy businesses, businesses that will continue running beyond us. Yeah. But and, before before we mm. go there, can you just drop us one of your top three strategies for standing out digitally? For for SMEs, how can I say, hey man, I want people to see my products and services for standing out and being seen? Top three strategies for me. First strategy is uh, creating relevant content, right? Very important. 
creating appealing content because there's creating relevant content and mm. then there's a creating visually appealing content that will be consumed by people. Mm. And then also being very persistent mm. in what you are communicating to your market. Because mm. there'll be some companies who will create nice content today and then they'll disappear for six months. Excuse me, what? Yeah. Digital, you need to be in it. You need to be in it's the conversation because there's, yeah, there's so many... Mm. You know, you need to have that unique voice, my nigga. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Just like how my voice is like, right? My voice is not like everybody else's. You sound like, I told you the first time we met. What Remember what say? I said? What did you say? I said you sound like you sing tenor, Doug. Like you have that. I sound like You who? have it in your voice. Like you sound like you can sing tenor. Oh, like, hey, like you, you get what I mean? That, like you have that. Hey, so yeah. we try to make you be as unique as possible with the content, with the messaging, with the packaging. Um, of your content mm. and that is what draws people uh, to your business that is what Vibe is all about and I'm telling you right now we do the best work in this country and we're aiming for the African continent so next year so Vibe will have another branch in another country I don't know where mm. but I will tell you that that's why I'm going on record right now manifest sir a, to say yes, what, sir. we're going to become an MN, MNC mm. next year Mm. Hey guys, in the next 90 seconds, I'll be sharing with you some exciting news that you want to be a part of. Deep Dive will be hosting its very first masterclass themed setting yourself up for success. But before we get into the details, let me let you in on the amazing lineup of speakers that we'll be having. We will be having Kumo Nawa, a former guest on the Deep Dive, who is a financial educator. Take us through how to get out of debt and how to take control of your finances. And then we will have Mr. Spon, who also a former guest on the deep dive, take us through how to release yourself from what's holding you back and how to identify your God-given gifts and talent. And then we'll have yours truly take us through 50 recession-proof side hustles anyone can start in 2023. This event will take place on the 2nd of April, 2023. The venue will be University of Botswana, Room 41. As for the times, it will be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Refreshments will be served. As for tickets, 200 pula admits one, 350 pula admits two. And we will also have stalls where you can take your business and place it in the eyes of 200 plus potential customers for an investment of 500 pula only. If you have been struggling to get ahead but seem to be stuck in the same spot, if you have been struggling financially or simply want to take your finances to the next level, this event is for you. So make sure to register below in the description and get yourself a ticket to this event. This could be the start of something new. This could be the year everything changes for you. Love to see you on the 2nd of April, 2020. But until then, be great. Hey Amen. And, and what, as, as you're talking right now, I'm wondering how are you able to, because people want to express themselves like that personal, authentic selves mm -hmm. online, mm. which may sometimes not be good for employers, investors, whatnot. And then they also want to express that business side. Yeah. Obviously, you are passionate about business as yeah. I am. So mm. we talk a lot about it. But how are you able to find that balance? Because I think some people are struggling with, hey man, yeah. you know, talk uh, yeah. about all these things. You make jokes, whatever, yeah. share memes and do whatnot. But yeah. I also want to talk about my side, my business, whatever. How yeah. are you able to, to put those together? First thing you should understand, you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. One. Yes, sir. Two, um, you also have to understand yourself as a brand. Understand mm. and understand the the landscape of what's happening out there. You understand what I mean? Um, when you when you understand the landscape, when you also understand yourself and also understand where you want to go, then you can give yourself some direction as to which your content will go to. You understand? So there are certain things, there's certain conversations that I won't involve myself in. Mm. You know, on social media, Deliberate. although they are raging, you understand? Yeah. And I'll be like, nah, this is not for me. This is not my brand. It's not what I'll be talking about. Um, and you'll find, you know, there'll be a conversation or a trending topic that's raging right now. Mm. Or his nieces or something. Mm. You understand? So it's just about knowing you, what you want to talk about, what you want people to know you about. You understand? So, I mean, yeah. if you see my Facebook name right now, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, get what I mean? yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's being an authentic, sure, and, sure, and sure, I think a lot of sure. people do appreciate authenticity, as, especially yeah. in this day and age, because there's a lot of people who are fake. Yeah, unfortunately, 
Um, so because I've added a lot of real aspects, mm. not just about business, but also about personal life, also about this and that. Like I said, I even mentioned it on the stage for I love babies. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of saying I love babies. Man, I yeah. love babies, bro. Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't? There's a bunch of people who have, you know, daughters, sons, nephews, nieces, and so on and so forth, you know, who will relate to that aspect because I'm a human being at the end of the day. Mm. People appreciate that authenticness, that realness about me and my content. And that's why I've been able to, you know, gain almost 17,000 followers on, on, on Twitter, which yeah. is pretty huge. 15,000, almost 16 on Facebook. You get what I mean? Instagram. And that was organic. Some of, no, I, I yeah. won't lie. I won't lie. <laughs> a lot of it was organic. A lot of yeah, it was yeah, organic. Yeah. Oh, well, Twitter was organic, actually. Oh, Twitter was organic. Yeah, Twitter was nah. completely organic. Uh, How Facebook do you do was, it on Twitter, man? I'm struggling. I don't even know what to write, dog. I'm Twitter, really looking at Twitter, I'm not, like, hey, I have this thought, but yeah. hey, man, I don't know. Twitter's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. It, t- it takes a but while. I think like a lot of what I write could be Twitter relevant. I'm just afraid probably, or just because my account is new. You hear what back you- Back to where we were. Where, yeah. Back to where we were. Fear. Just because, yeah, I'm learning from you right now as we're talking. Yeah, yeah. How do you actually just navigate that space? Beta. Beta hell. Beta hell. Just through my thoughts. People will follow you for what you, if they don't like you, they don't like you. Yeah. I mean, I've been blocked. <laughs> By people on Twitter. Yeah. I've been muted, I'm sure. It's fine. I don't you pay sleep attention. like a baby. I'm not there. <laughs> hey, I definitely sleep like yeah, a baby. I'm yeah. not their cup of tea. It's okay. But yeah. I got 17,000 people who subscribe to what I talk about. Yeah. You understand? And those are who I cater to. Yeah. If I'm not your cup of tea, that's okay. It's okay. You're probably my, not, not my cup of tea as well. It's okay. It happens, bro. How do you identify these people that you feel like, hey man, this guy's two-faced? Like… It's fake. Like you just be- look at their content, see what they're talking about. If yeah. you notice on, mm, oh, yeah, ah, mm. and it's fine. And people should understand that that's okay. Yeah. You don't have to be okay with them poor or garabo. That doesn't mean we should beef. Right? I mean, even 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 us as individuals, we don't like everybody. No, we so don't. Why do you expect everybody to like us? I know? don't even like myself sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. get what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. You just gotta be authentic. You just gotta be authentic. Be real with it. Honest. Thank you guys for watching this episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Deep Dive is dedicated to bringing you the most comprehensive and engaging information about business, personal finance, and personal development. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. If you like this video, give it a like to show your support and help us reach a wider audience. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family who may be interested. Sharing helps us grow our community and connect with like-minded individuals. Leave a comment below and give us your biggest take away on this episode if you're interested in being a part of our live studio audiences make sure to register for the next show can make it to the show no problem check out our patreon page to watch the full episode and get exclusive access to more great content thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode of the deep dive